Hi, my name is Adam DeSerio from DeSerio Tours, and I'm here today with Alyssa. We're going to share with you exactly what you need to pack for your next DeSerio tour. We're going to share both the female and male perspective of just a carry-on setup, exactly what we normally take on a typical trip, both the personal item and the carry-on luggage, and we're going to even share some information about the shoes so that you feel that much more comfortable and confident packing for your next DeSerio tour. Now, as you already know, it is highly recommended to just bring a carry-on setup. But why is that? Well, because of a couple of reasons. Number one, everything is with you at all times. You don't have to worry about checking a bag and then collecting it through your layover and rechecking it. You don't have to worry about a lost bag or anything being stolen or taken out because it's always with you at all times. More importantly, it's that much easier to travel with. You know, it doesn't take up that much space in the hotel room. It's easy to get on the trains, into taxis. We're going to be in a shared kind of group environment, also with the van. So just be aware of how much space you're taking up because we all have to share that. And it just makes it so much easier on you to carry around a lot less items. So we're going to share with you, because it could be a little daunting at first, we're going to share with you exactly what's in here so that you feel like you know that you have everything that you need to get through a two-week trip with me. Feel free to watch this entire video through or skip to a specific section as you see on the time codes on the screen. As well, take a look at the entire blog that has information and direct links to a lot of the stuff that we talk about or even updated products and items that I didn't have an opportunity to share with you in this video. So we're actually going to start with the personal item. You know, a lot of people forget that in addition to the carry-on item, you can actually bring a pretty substantial piece of luggage that they call a personal item. This could include a tote bag, a backpack, or even a dedicated personal item such as this. We typically bring backpacks, but um, just wanted to show this as an option as sometimes they're bundled with other pieces of luggage, or you might have something like this laying around already at your house. A little bit larger and a little bit easier to travel with is the backpack, so that's typically what we use. We just wanted to show you a couple of options. So when it comes to the personal item, typically everything that's in here is the gear that you're going to want to access while you're on the plane. This is going to have to fit under the seat in front of you, so put headphones on, chargers, and all that kind of stuff in here. So we're going to show you what's in these before we show you the carry-on item, which really has just the clothes in them. We're gonna actually show you now exactly what we put in our personal item. As you can see within my backpack, it has a lot of compartments and I can kind of customize it. Some bags don't have that ability and just have a bunch of zippers, so whatever works for you. Within mine, I actually have about a third of it taken up with just camera. So if you don't have a camera or you're not a photographer, then you'll have an even bigger amount of space to carry in your personal item to take some of these essentials with you that we've laid out for you here. So the first thing we'll go over is neck and back pillow. So we oftentimes like to bring both a neck and back pillow with us on our long travels. It's just something super nice to have on the long plane ride. Something you might not often consider as a back pillow, but it does provide extra support on the long flight. So totally optional, but something we like to carry with us. Both of these are inflatable, so taking up less space when you're not needing them or using them. And I actually clip mine to the outside of my bag to my zipper rather than putting it inside. So that way I have even more space inside of my bag. Yeah, great idea. And either way works. You definitely want to be able to have easy access to that on the plane. Something you might not need easy access to on the plane, but you will want right away once you land is your sunglasses. So again, I'll just kind of put those up near the top in a little bag and have those available for me uh, when we land. Same with regular glasses versus sunglasses, something <laughs> obviously I want up close with me in case I can't see it. This will be definitely something I want close reach and I know <laughs> where it is. Something that's going to be important for you is to keep everything charged up. So I actually keep all my charging cables and adapters and everything in a bright orange bag so it's easy to find at night or in the dark on the plane. I even put in glow-in-the-dark zipper pulls so I can find it. Um, and again, in this bag, I just have my charging cable, my kind of charger. Something you'll of course need and want is the correct power adapters for the country or countries that you'll be visiting. So in particular, this one is for Italy. But uh, if you want something even more generic and maybe even more useful, 
is more of a item like this, which is a universal kind of uh, charging pack. You can plug in for EU, UK, Australia, just pick which one you want. It comes then with an outlet so you can plug in items or USBs on the bottom so you can keep all your devices charged up in a simple little uh, adapter like this. I have that as well, um, except I keep mine in my front zipper pocket. I just happen to have more zippers in this bag than Adam does, so again, either way works. Something else we like to carry with us as well is a battery pack, something totally optional, but provides that extra charge if you're running low on battery on the long flight or you have a tablet that you need to charge, something that you can also carry with you in a purse or something during your day. So these are nifty to have um, on long travels and trips. Absolutely. Uh, another thing, of course, you're going to need to carry if you want to get on the plane to begin with is your passport. I like to keep my passport in a little leather uh, kind of carrier like this or in even an RFID sleeve just keeps it that much more protected. She actually has a really cool way of keeping hers. Yeah, so a slightly different option that Adam has and that I'm using is a RFID wallet. So something that's a little bit bigger, but I can fit more in it, right? So I can take out my regular wallet and then just put all my credit cards here as well as my passport. And then in this case, I also have an international driving permit in here, which I'll let Adam speak a little bit more to. Yeah, if you plan to do any uh, driving while abroad, either in a vehicle or car or you want to spend a little time afterwards on your own, you're going to need an international driving permit. So you just apply for this through AAA, give them your information, a little passport photo, um, and then they'll issue you a one-year international driving permit, which works in, I think, like maybe 70 or 80 countries. It works in a lot of places. Um, so basically anywhere that you would want to drive, you're going to need this. Otherwise, you will not be able to rent a car or if you do get pulled over and you don't have this, then it's the equivalent of not having a license. So you definitely want to keep this. And I just keep the passport and the driving permit right at the top in a zipper so I can access that easily. Something else that I have in my bag that Adam doesn't necessarily have in his is a curling iron or a hot tool, so like a hair straightener any hair device that you use, so hair dryer, hair straightener, curling iron, you'll wanna make sure it's dual voltage, otherwise you're gonna run into some problems when you go to try to plug this into your hotel room, and you'd rather not fry out uh, the hotel outlet or your device, <laughs> and then you'll be frazzled and have no hair left to curl. <laughs> <laughs> so. Absolutely, yeah, most electronics are already dual voltage and can work in different countries without needing to do any special conversion. But items like a, um, anything with a heating element like that is going to need to be specifically a dual voltage or 220 volt uh, option that you can use on that device so that again it doesn't cause any problems for the device or the hotel it will be visiting. So maybe you'll want to listen to some good tunes while on the plane. Again, I keep my headphones or earbuds pretty accessible because I want to use that while I'm traveling. I also have a couple more things that I'll go over since Adam's almost done with his bag, but something I like to keep close to me too is a jewelry bag. So again, something that I've just found um, that's been really nice on travels. You don't have to do it if you don't carry a lot of jewelry with you, um, but this is small enough and flat enough that it's easy to carry in this bag and something I want close with me. I don't want and you know nice jewelry out in my other bag where someone might be able to take it. So again, this is just super close to me. I know no one's gonna steal it. Um, and it's a great way to keep your necklaces untangled. There's nothing worse than getting to your destination and wanting to wear something super nice and then you have to sit there for hours trying to get it untangled, which is never fun. So just a neat way to keep some jewelry in one's place and not take up that much space. Yeah, absolutely. And to keep everything safe, I like to carry at least a couple of travel locks. I prefer the ones that have a combination on them rather than a key that you could lose or break. So I'll, tear, I'll take one of these TSA travel locks and put it on the zippers and keep everything kind of zipped up as I walk around, which gives me the peace of mind, makes it feel that much more comfortable and know that nobody's gonna bother me or, or mess with me. But you actually have something even cooler than that. Why don't you share a little bit about this product? 
Yeah, so the Travel On makes this really awesome purse and actually backpacks as well and other travel gear, but I like this purse a lot because it's spe specific to anti-theft and for travel. So something that I like carrying with me when I don't want a bigger backpack throughout the day and just something lighter, but still has enough space for maybe a water bottle, some souvenirs and the important items, sunglasses, my passport, anything else I might need but it has these really neat little zippers that clip at the bottom. So this way it's not easy for someone to come and open it. So if you're you know, staring and looking at a Coliseum or something beautiful that you're super interested in, it's a great way to keep this safe when you're looking away and so no one can pickpocket you. So really like this, really durable, um, and that way it doesn't steal. And then you get a nice two for one in your bag <laughs> because you can fit this inside of your bigger backpack. So it all works out. Yeah, absolutely. Like she said, they make a ton of different products. They make some wallets, backpacks, purses. Travel On is a fantastic company um, and a lot of people have used them before and absolutely love them. So check out again some of the products we have listed for you in the blog. So something else I also like to carry in my backpack with me is a jacket or a sweater. I'm sure you all know, but oftentimes it gets cold on a plane, so it's great to have this with you for quick access for when you get a little bit chilly, and then you have another clothing item that you can bring with you on the trip. I like to put this in my laptop sleeve of my backpack. Um, if you don't have a laptop, obviously that makes sense, <laughs> otherwise it would be full. But you can put it in there and it actually provides a little bit more back support too because you're getting extra cushion and it makes it really easy to open mid-flight and get access to it. Absolutely. As we zip up the bag, the last thing that goes in on the outside of the bag, of course, is going to be a travel tag, a luggage tag, just to help identify your bag or again, just to have that available and ready. I'll even put on the outside of my bag a little container of Purell or hand sanitizer, just so that again, I can keep easily accessing that. Um, something that I actually put in the back laptop sleeve is the Clorox wipes. I'll use these to wipe down my whole area in the plane or the train, wherever I am, um, just to make sure everything is as clean as possible, uh, just to avoid any potential of getting a cold or anything while I'm traveling. Just keep it everything clean and uh, tidy and you'll be a safe traveler and a locked up traveler. So this is everything that we carry around in our personal item. Um, except for oh, one thing that one Adam thing. is missing because it was so <laughs> small he didn't even see it. <laughs> the very last thing that I actually carry in my bag, which Adam didn't have, um, is something for pills. So if you get a really bad headache and you want to carry any medicine with you, I also have prescriptions I need to bring with me. So this is a great way with a little multi-compartment that I can just put everything in one spot so I don't lose it. Um, so again, just another cool option and something I want quick access in case I need to take something um, right away and want to be able to access it. So this is the very last thing that I have and I'll just put that in the front of my bag. Perfect. So as you see, fits very easily. Still have plenty of room for souvenirs, plenty of room for other items uh, that you'll collect throughout your travel. And that's everything in the personal item. Let's move on now to the clothes because you're going to want to wear something on this trip. So let's go to the carry-on items. Now as your carry-on item, every airline is going to have their specific rules of what the exact size is. However, most of them tend to be around 21 inches by 14 inches by 7 inches. Easy way to remember that is traveling for 7 days is as easy as 1, 2, 3. 7 times 1, 7 times 2, and 7 times 3 give you your three dimensions of 7 by 14 by 21. And that's pretty much exactly what these two kinds of luggage options that we have for you today are. They're the maximum size for carry-on that you are allowed to take. Mine, that I prefer to take, is actually a backpack carry-on piece of luggage. But what a lot of people end up taking is one of these, which is a rollerboard option. I prefer the backpack. Some people prefer the rollerboard. It's kind of up to you. Um, just be aware that these are probably the two most common. You'll find a few hybrid options like a duffel bag option or even a roller board that actually has backpack straps. So a few different options out there, but these two probably are the most popular and we're going to show you exactly how we've packed in both so that you can decide which one is right for you. So I don't know if you can see, maybe we'll turn them a little bit so you can see into the bag. Basically we have our bathroom bags 
and we have all the clothes. Now you're probably saying, where are the clothes? I don't see them. Well, they're actually in these packing cubes. And if we pull those out, I have all of the bottoms in one and all of the tops in another and all the socks and underwear in the final third bag. And everything is kind of separated like that. It makes it extremely easy to find what you're looking for and repack when you're ready to go to the next location. You just throw these bags in and zip it up and you're ready to go. So let's go through all the stuff that we actually have in here. So we're actually gonna start first by explaining the toiletry bags. I have two separate ones, one that's just a liquids bag and one that's just for items that are non-liquids. So toothbrush for me, beard trimmer probably for you, like makeup brushes and powdered makeup and stuff like that. And then of course the other, the actual liquid bag, if you do have to at an airport, get out the liquid bag, that way you can get this out. I found that uh, this quart size zip up liquid bag works perfectly fine. You can find a lot of these on Amazon that will say carry on approved um, and just make sure they're an actual quart size bag. Uh, you have one of those as well. So those just easily are found right near the top and accessible in the bag. Um, Anything else special that you have in yours? No, but I do think it's nice to have two separate ones. I've also traveled with one big one, but it just takes up more space and two is easier to kind of configure in your bag if you're feeling tight on space or you want to put one maybe even in your backpack if you have extra space. So I also travel with two as well and very similar to Adam between my liquid and then all my non-liquid items in here. Yeah. So you're going to want to look and see for your specific tour what the information says but for most of the tours that i offer through the serial tours we stop or have time to stop in the middle of the trip to do laundry either through a laundromat or actually doing it through the hotel so in reality on those kinds of trips you only really need to pack for about one week's worth of clothes however we actually are going to show you how to pack where you don't have to stop for laundry. I haven't, we have enough clothes in here to get through a full two week trip if we wanted to, um, with the idea in mind that you're probably gonna wear some of the items twice. You know, you're not gonna use them up too much in one day, so you can definitely rewear it, or more importantly, you'll be able to layer items, especially if you're cold, rather than bringing a big jacket, just bring items that you can layer and stay warm. So we're gonna show you a full two week wardrobe, basically, of what we typically pack. We'll start with the tops. I usually bring about seven or eight short sleeve shirts, a couple long sleeve shirts, a couple nicer shirts. So in here, I have a short sleeve um, button up shirt, I have some t-shirts, I'll just kind of make a mess of it as I pull them out just so you can see. I have a couple kind of neutral colored t-shirts, a couple of polo shirts, I've got a white one and a red one, and I actually like using linen cloth. Um, they make a lot of really great clothes out of linen, they keep you really dry and cool in the summer. Um, and they're very comfortable to wear, so especially on a trip like to Greece or somewhere in the summer. These are really nice. Again, a button-up shirt. So it's nothing too fancy. You know, we're not going to be going to any really fancy restaurants or anything. Um, but at the same time, you want stuff that's going to be compatible with each other. So pick colors that anything works with. Any, any top works with any bottom. Um, they can be interchanged. You can kind of move it around and try a new outfit out without having just something specific that you can only wear once, one way. Make it compatible, kind of a universal wardrobe. So just to finish off mine, I've got another t-shirt. I've got a long sleeve button up shirt, all nicely folded and now just kind of set here for you. And then uh, one or two long sleeve shirts in the dedicated tops. Um, travel cube so that I keep all of it together and uh, that's what I have as the tops. What about you? Something else I keep in mind is also a pajama set. So I find that one pajama set gets me through the whole trip, um, but you also can find space for two. I definitely still have room in here if I wanted to carry more, but I only bring one with me. So that is usually what I keep on the top of my bag. 
Then, similar to Adam, I have a lot of neutral colored t-shirts that are usually in the top of my bag here. So I have one, two, three, four. Um, so various colors. So again, just simple, plain t-shirts can go with anything. You'll oftentimes find that you want to travel um, or shop when you travel. Um, so I also like to keep a little bit of space knowing I might want to buy some cute Italian tops or find uh, some wonderful clothes along my travels. Um, so I do have these t-shirts here again, can go with anything. Then I also like to carry some tops that I feel like could be dressed up or down depending where you're going. So if you do wanna go to a little bit nicer of a restaurant or just wanna feel more fashionable, I have a couple more pattern tops, a little bit nicer material that again, I can kind of dress up or down depending as well as like just a button up top. And then I also like to bring a long sleeve t-shirt that I can layer. So if you're, it's not, you know, too, too cold, but you still want a little bit extra layer, I usually bring just a plain uh, black long sleeve that I can wear over top of things, as well as a couple nicer tops here. So like just a nicer button down. And then or up, depending on which way you do your buttons. <laughs> this is true, button up or down. I have to take a survey on do people do it up or down. I say button up. <laughs> but um, something else I have in my bag that Adam didn't have in his missed opportunity though is a dress. Um, you can also bring skirts. I don't have any with me, um, but I have like a long maxi dress here. Something just to keep in mind when you have, even with your shorts or skirts or dresses, when you're going into cathedrals or churches, they want you to have and they won't actually let you into them unless you have something that goes below the knee and you also have something that's not too revealing and your shoulders are covered so this goes for guys as well don't be showing off your muscles yet <laughs> want to make sure you don't have your muscle tanks or any too short of shorts but that's just something to keep in mind when you're packing as well as making sure you have things that will get you into these really awesome places that you're going to visit yeah like she pointed out you know you definitely want to be aware of what you're wearing that uh, you aren't stopped and, and you're still able to get into everywhere that we're gonna be visiting. Also, as you noticed, it's important, don't bring something that has a big logo on it or gets attention or um, something like that. Just keeping kind of muted neutral colors will both make it so that you don't necessarily stand out, which in a way that's a great thing. Um, as well as again, just making them all kind of compatible with each other and layerable. We can't stress that enough that layering is really your friend. So in the next bag is where I have the top or the bottoms and I also have like a my jacket which I'll end up probably putting in my personal item. I'll bring a light jacket and then I'll actually bring like a windbreaker too. Windbreaker is super great both to if it starts raining or if it actually is windy. So I'll keep both of those pretty accessible. Um, and then beyond that I will bring usually two pair of shorts. I just have some neutral color shorts. And then I'll bring one pair of pants and wear, of course, one pair of pants on the plane. So part of the outfit then that I'm wearing on the plane is part of the wardrobe that I'm gonna use in the rest of the trip. I don't love to wear jeans on the plane. I'll wear something a little bit more flexible, like a, a chino pant like this is a little bit more flexible um, and a little bit more comfortable, not just on the plane, but every night after eating a huge bowl of pasta. Um, so I'll bring, like I said, one pair of pants, two pair of shorts. So that's technically two pair of pants because I'm wearing one. The jackets and those all fit in the bottoms cube. Similar to Adam, I have a couple shorts and a couple pair of pants. So in this case, I have a couple neutral colors, again, just so it can go with about anything that I had in the tops bag. And then I also have two pairs of jeans in here, just some denim, but you can also do some khaki or different colors. Um, same with Adam, when I'm on the plane, I don't really love to wear jeans. So typically I'll bring something maybe a little bit lighter, like a legging or something that's got more stretch to it. Um, Cause like Adam said, you will be eating lots of amazing food. And if you're anything like me, I'm like, oof, I need stretchier clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So like I said, that's basically the clothes that we put in here. Again, your bag, I don't have to show you, but uh, the bag that has the underwear and socks, enough to get me through in here, I actually have 15 pair of socks, so enough to get through an entire two weeks without needing to do laundry. Throughout the trip though, I will put the laundry up here in like a dedicated laundry bag so that it makes it so that the rest of the clothes don't stink up. It's also easy to take this to the laundromat and just empty the laundry bag 
up here with the laundry bag, I'll also carry a little bit of my own laundry detergent, um, just in case I needed to. If they didn't have some, for some reason they ran out, it's good to have a little bit of laundry detergent. And that's pretty much everything that gets put into this uh, carry-on bag. It's just the clothes. There was still plenty of room. Again, as, as she pointed out, you're going to want to acquire some items as you see them looking beautiful in the windows and you walk by and say, oh my gosh, I want to take that home with me. Um, it'll definitely fit in here. So this, for us, gets us through two weeks without having to do laundry. But if we had to or wanted to in the middle of the trip, again, we easily could. Um, it's plenty of items for either option. So it's completely up to you, but we want to just show you what it's, how it's possible to do um, an entire two week trip with just carry on items. And the final item, of course, that we didn't have in here is the shoes. I personally say one pair of shoes is plenty. I'll bring a set of sport shoes, maybe something that looks a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer, like these dark brown ones. Very comfortable, very casual, but uh, still nice enough that they go with everything that I've, I've put as my outfit. Again, I'll wear these on the plane, so I don't need to pack them. Yeah. Do you have anything? I usually go again for something neutral, something that's going to be comfortable. You don't want to buy new shoes before the trip. We huh. can't stress that enough. And your feet are going to hurt. You're going to do a lot of walking. And if you're just breaking in a shoe, it's not going to be the most comfortable for you. So definitely pick something that you know you'll be comfortable with. Don't try out something new right before the trip or try to break new shoes in at least maybe a month or more before the trip. You can also um, bring some sandals. Just make sure anything's more of that travel and is going to give you the support you need for those long walking days. So right now I primarily carry sneakers with me, but you're more than welcome to bring an extra pair. So hopefully this was extremely helpful to you that both Alyssa and I were able to show both a female and male perspective of everything that we pack for a whole two week trip to make it that much easier for you. Again, take a look through the blog, look at the links and everything. There's a ton of other stuff that we didn't have time to cover in this, in this video. Reach out if you have any questions or comments or additional advice that you'd like to share with us and that we can pass on to future travelers. But in the meantime, good luck with all your packing and can't wait to see you on the next Desirio tour. Take care.